Good evening and welcome to High Top Sports Network's presentation of Heritage Conference Football. My name is Joe Rhodes. Joining me today, uh, doing camera here to my right, Ryan Forster. We're uh, here at Connemal Valley, a nice little hour and a half drive from our home in Armstrong County, but glad uh, wherever you may be tonight that you could join us. West Shemokin will be receiving the opening kickoff here. Wolves come in at a record of two and three. Connemal Valley 0 and 5 after a 2 and 8 campaign a year ago. Returning eight starters on defense, so hoping that will help this team in the second half of their schedule. Connemal Valley coming in, surrendering just about 33.8 points per game and scoring just 8.4, so not just about the defense for Connemal Valley tonight. To stopping Lou Swartz and company for West Shemokin, but also getting that offense on track. As for the Wolves, the young man I just mentioned, Lou Swartz, really the catalyst, the heart and soul for this West Shemokin team. And he will uh, undoubtedly be a part of the equation tonight. He's 50 yards short of the school record for rushing yards in a season and one touchdown away from the school record for touchdowns in a season. And yes, folks, it's uh, only the sixth game of the year. So Lou Swartz on a Ridiculous pace, averaging 228 yards per contest. It'll be Henry Clark and Linhart back deep for the Wolves, who will receive this opening kick. And we're off. The up man ends up getting it. That is. The aforementioned Lou Swartz who <laughs> runs over the first tackler and is brought down by various players on the Connemal Valley side. And the Wolves will start with the football at the 37 yard line going from your right to left. First and 10 for the Wolves, the opening possession of this game. Lou Swartz at quarterback. Three receivers. Two to his right. He's going to hand the ball off. Running to the right for the Wolves there. And getting about a, I'll say about a yard, yard and a half gain. Henry Clark. So we bring up a second down and eight. 39-yard line here. Good to see a grass field. Those are fewer and far between in today's football, especially over in Whippeo land where we do a lot of games, obviously. But uh, grass, the choice here at Connemal Valley. Swartz gets that one outside to Osterling. Osterling's going to try to get outside and hit by two players just past the 40-yard line, say the 41-yard line. Bring up third down. Osterling, the Wolves' leading receiver, just 35 yards per game. One touchdown reception, the only receiving touchdown all year by the Wolves, by the aforementioned Ezra Osterling. So a third down, six to go. Swartz in the gun, five receivers. Man in motion, that's Clark. Swartz is going to keep it instead, run forward and come up just a yard short of the first down. So early decision here for Coach John McCullough and company. Ball Around the 47-yard line. Fourth and one. The offense will stay on the field. Swartz not back deep, so it'll lead you to believe the Wolves will go for it. Same formation as a play ago. Swartz in the gun. Going to change the call. Offensive coordinator Phil Parks getting it into... Swartz, he's going to run forward, put his head down, and get about, we'll say, better part of four yards there, and that will move the sticks for the Wolves and continue this opening offensive drive. So the Wolves making a uh, difficult decision early on to go for it on fourth down. They convert and set up a fresh set of downs right at the 50-yard line. Swartz back in the gun once again. Clark to his right. Four receivers to his disposal. Clark's going to take the fake. And then that one stripped away. Swartz keeps it. 
ripped out. And that's going to go to Connemal Valley, a early turnover and a very unlikely uh, player to uh, turn that ball over, Lou Swartz. And Connemal Valley, though they allowed the Wolves a fresh set of downs there, they get it right back in the very next play, and they'll be in good uh, field position as well at their own 48-yard line. So. Conemal Valley, very advantageous play. We talked about their defense needing to make a play here in this game, bringing back eight starters from a year ago, and they come up with one here in the first drive of the game, stripping loose Swartz of the football. They rush forward, trying to see the ball handler, pile of wolves in on the play. I believe that was numbers. Oh boy, numbers. Here, number 16 for Connemal Valley in the first play of the game in their first, excuse me, their first offensive possession. Devin Chontis, the senior. Bunch here. No one really outside, far outside the tackles. The double reverse coming back around, but. Couldn't hold the block was number three. Number two, Tom Stifler brought down the senior, wrapped up in the backfield. Good play design, but that block just not being held by Adam Jasper. And as a result, the Blue Jays back a yard from where they started at the 47-yard line. Loss of four total. So a big third down here, third and 11, 841 left in this first quarter. First time these two teams have matched up as Heritage Conference foes, of course, Connemal Valley new to the conference along with some other new faces here over last the last few years. The flag on the play, it's gonna be offside against the Wolves. So again, something uh, could prove costly if the Blue Jays are able to pick up the first down here make it a third and six instead. So mistakes. Uh, an issue here early on for West Shemokin, the fumble in the offensive drive uh, earlier and now a offside call to make this a third down and six instead of third and 11. A bevy of blockers on the right side, but getting good penetration there was the, who else? Lou Swartz with the tackle right around the line of scrimmage, so. Bring up a fourth down and six for Connemal Valley. A loss of three, actually, so. Imagine the Blue Jays will punt here. Back deep is Adam Jasper. Back for the return is Henry Clark for West Shemokin. A good punt over the head of Clark. It's going to get a friendly bounce and go out of bounds at the two-yard line. So an excellent job there by Jasper to pin the Wolves deep on their what will be their second offensive possession of this game, which they'll begin here in a moment. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back on High Top Sports Network. Steffi's Country Catering prepares home-style made-from-scratch dishes that will have you convinced mom made it. Whatever the occasion, Steffi's Country Catering will have you coming back for every event year-round. Find us on Facebook to place an order or to see our Sunday specials or call 724-54-85047. And welcome back to High Top Sports Network. The second offensive possession of this game for the Wolves will begin at the two-yard line. Lou Swartz taking the direct snap, put his head down, try to... Move the pile forward. He'll get out to about the four-yard line, so give him about a two-yard gain. As mentioned, Lou is, uh, came into the game 50 yards short of setting the school record for most yards in a game. Or, excuse me, game. That would be amazing. Uh, in a season, excuse me. One touchdown away from setting the school mark for touchdowns in a season as well. 6.58 remaining, first quarter. Wolves able to stop the Blue Jays in their previous possession. Here's a handoff to Clark, I believe. He's going to 
try to move the pile forward out past the five yard line. They're going to mark them down around the seven yard line. And another third down brought up. We'll make it third and five. Third and six, third and five, I'm splitting hairs. 628 remaining first quarter. Wolves just one pass so far in this game between the previous possession and this one. Schwartz fakes the handoff. He's going to move forward. He's going to run past the 35, past the 45, and or 35, excuse me, wrapped up there at around the 39-yard line. And the Wolves almost able to take that loose Schwartz carry to the house. They're going to say he's down at the 40-yard line. Seven, oh, excuse me. Yeah, ball at the 40-yard line. I was going to say, Lou getting awfully close to that school mark. I'm curious whether or not they'll stop play for that. Or at least toss that ball out of play. 5.51 left now. Sports surveys. He's got Clark to his right. He's going to drop back. He is going to throw. He's going to throw across the field. He's got an open man in the middle of the field who is hit immediately, but not without a nice game by the Wolves who are in Blue Jays territory at the 30-yard line. Lou Swartz with a dime right there. And able to connect with Isaac Schreckengoss, the sophomore. So the second pass of the game so far for West Shimokin, a big gainer. Swartz to Schreckengost. And clock continues to roll here, 5.26 left. In this first quarter, Wolves gonna begin this set of downs with a handoff to Clark, who looks like he's in a rugby pile, but he is uh, going to be marked about a yard past the line of scrimmage to bring up a second down and nine. I want to thank our sponsors today. You see our scoreboard sponsor, uh, the one and only Schulteis Roofing. Thank you to Schulteis Roofing for their continued support of West Shimokan Athletics. Armstrong Indoor Athletics, Ryan Bowser State Farm, John F. Graff Insurance Agency, Schaefer's HVAC, Carson Boyer Funeral Home, of course, Brian Myers and the fine folks there. And, and Clark uh, able to break a tackle, then he tried reversing field and was met again, that time number 44 for the Blue Jays. Meets uh, Clark. Brings him down. That's Tanner George, the junior. Also want to mention uh, Phoenix Physical Therapy of Rural Valley and Katanning. Make sure you folks check out our sponsors. Steffi's Country Catering, of course, as you saw their commercial a moment ago. And Birdsfoot Golf Club. Don't want to forget about them either. Official golf course of High Top Sports Network. Here's Swartz. Pocket breaks down. He's going to get outside past the 30 down to about the 20 yard line and that's going to probably put Lou darn close to that school mark. The, the passing play it wasn't a design run and that's I think what allowed Swartz to get the kind of room that he did. Yeah. And, and sort of a uh, yep that is going to be I believe the Mark, or set the mark for the Wolves. I heard a little bit of a cheer from the West Shemokin sideline there. It sounds like he might have uh, surpassed the record set by Brendan Monty just a few years ago. So first and 10, Swartz gonna take this direct snap. Get outside, break a first tackle, shed a second. It's gonna take a just a whole horde of Blue Jays to bring down the wrecking ball, Mr. Lou Swartz. Down to about the 15 yard line. Three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Swartz able to carry that one for six yards in the red zone, the Ryan Bowser State Farm red zone. Like a good neighbor, Ryan Bowser State Farm is there. Back in the gun. Gonna 
keep the handoff. Nice fake there to Clark. Shreds a tackler, and he's in. Four, six, loose. Swartz, now the school record holder for touchdowns in a season, rushing touchdowns in a season. And couldn't go to a better young man, Lou Swartz, a friend of High Top Sports Network. Got, a, got to play a round of golf at the aforementioned Bird's Foot Golf Club with Lou right towards the tail end of summer. And as you can imagine, Lou able to hit the ball a, a country mile. But, uh, you know, for all the accolades and things that Lou's been able to achieve on the playing field, uh, just as good of a young man. So congratulations to Lou Swartz, one of those uh, transcendent players uh, for this program. Talk about just the uh, routine that he's on. There's a botch snap, and they're going to say down because his knee was on the ground was Clark, I believe. Not sure, but uh, saying about Lou Swartz's workout routine, and that's really kind of one thing about him that um, makes him special, his ability to make those around him work harder just by his effort, and that's been quite evident in our talks with Coach John McCullough. And just uh, the guys you see in the in the weight room in West Shemokin now a little bit more than they used to be because of Lou Swartz. So, again, congratulations to Lou. Osterling now on for the extra point. That kick is up and plenty good. And the Wolves take a 7 to nothing lead here in quarter number one with 2.33 left on this Carson Boyer game night on High Top Sports Network. Thank you to the awesome folks at Carson Boyer Funeral Home and Monuments. Carson Boyer Funeral Home and Monuments. The, the extra point sponsor as well there, so... After losing a loved one, you can trust the funeral directors at Carson Boyer Funeral Home and Monuments to help you celebrate your loved one's life. Their staff has experience planning a variety of funeral services and can assist you and your family in honoring your loved one, no matter what uh, your personal preference is or budget or culture or religion. Carson Boyer Funeral Home and Monuments pride itself on serving the rural valley and surrounding Armstrong and Indiana County communities with compassion, dignity, and respect. So thank you again to Carson Boyer Funeral Home for their continued support here on High Top Sports Network. So after Osterling was able to knock that one through, we'll update the scoreboard for you here as well. The Wolves take a seven to nothing lead here in quarter number one. Again, 232 remaining. Wolves able to put it in pay dirt in the second drive of the game after fumbling away a ball in the first possession. Connemal Valley with just one offensive drive here thus far. Short kick, bouncing and take it in around the 10 yard line, going to his right. And getting some more room after a nice block was number 10, Philip Ashcom. And a flag for a late hit there. And again, a Another mistake by the Wolves that's going to probably cost them 15 here now. So the fumble and then the five-yard penalty on that third down that could have cost the Wolves, but they were able to battle past that. Now a late hit, personal foul against West Shemokin. So that'll move it up 15 more yards for the Blue Jays, who will get pretty solid field position, all things considered. Started the last drive right around the right around midfield. Now this drive is going to start at the 43-yard line. So advantageous field position for the Blue Jays in their first two drives of this game. Another tight formation here for the Blue Jays. Snap, drop, and West Shemokin might have gotten it back. And they did indeed. A fumbled snap will give the Wolves now a good offensive field position on their third drive of the game after a fumble recovery there. Just a, a low snap there, a hard one to get for Devin Chontis. And 
as a result, the Wolves advantageously, not to use that word for the 15th time here today, <laughs> uh, able to snatch that one up and do so in Blue Jays territory, the ball at the 40 yard line. So a second down and 10 after nothing doing on that first play of this, uh, this drive for the Wolves. Swartz in the gun. Hands that one off to Clark. Or no, sorry, Luke keeps it. And he is met by a ton of Blue Jays. Great job getting penetration there by the Connemal Valley defense. And a long third down now for West Shimokin. 154 left. So Lou doing a great job of uh, hiding the football. I thought that he had given that one off to Henry Clark, and maybe he should have because it looked like Clark had open space there to his right. Said he keeps it in the Cottonmouth Valley defense all over him. Swartz in the gun. Three receivers to his left. He's going to drop back, look to throw, decide to run. Now he's going to throw. Open down the field is Osterling, who grabs it, brings it in around the six-yard line, had to readjust the run past the football, or where Lou was able to get that to, and coming back for it was Ezra Osterling. And the Wolves now have first and goal at the six. And that's what Lou Swartz can do. He was starting to creep towards the line of scrimmage. The Blue Jays thought maybe he's going to run, a couple guys came up, and that includes the secondary who forgot about Ezra Osterling back there deep, and the Wolves' leading receiver able to gather it in at the six-yard line and set up a first and goal. First down and goal for West Shemoke, and looking to add on to their 7 and nothing lead here handoff and diving forward didn't get a number there oh there's Clark so just a short game there under a minute to play here in the first quarter Swartz hands that one off on the end of the round by Clark. Clark trying to get outside, but again, the Connemal Valley defense up to the task there, and he's stopped right around the five-yard line. So Wolves not making much progress after that long throw and catch from Lou Swartz to Ezra Osterling, and now another crucial third down. This game seeing a lot of those. Every drive so far has seen a... Third down. Swartz keeps it. He's going to try to move forward, but again, and there's a little bit of a late push that brings the ball. Man, oh man, I thought the efforts of Lou Swartz were going to be stopped around the five yard line. Instead, the pile continues to move forward. Give credit to his blockers up front. And he's able to move the ball forward to the one yard line and set up a fourth and goal at the one. So we'll see what the Wolves do here after this stoppage at the end of the first quarter. Here are your score, West Shemokin seven, Connemal Valley nothing. The Wolves threatening here as we begin quarter number two. Hi everyone. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hey everyone. Hey everyone. Hi everyone. Hi everyone.
Hi, everyone. We're here tonight at the Richard G. Snyder YMCA. T-Bone. 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 Woo! Guys, that's right. It's five dollars sushi Wednesday. Produce sale. Bananas. Woo! Forty-five cents a pound. Pork turkeys. You know why we're doing pork turkeys? We're doing a fundraiser. The meat keeps on rolling. The hair is sprinkled. Yeah. Shark week. You know what day it is today? It is. Sushi Wednesday, $5 sushi rolls today. We're getting inspired. Come on, and help me hashtag save me. And we're pumped up because we are less than 24 hours away from camp out for community tomorrow. Like and share, like and share. So like and share, like and share, help spread the word. Just make sure you like and share. We can't do what we do without you. Come and see us. We can't do what we do without you. Come and see us. We can't do what we do without you. Come and see us. Can't do what we do without you. Come and see us. And welcome back to High Top Sports Network. A fourth down for the Wolves. Fourth and goal. Ball at the one-yard line. Lou Swartz in the gun. Two receivers at the bottom of the screen. Swartz is going to keep it and run left for the score. Lou Swartz makes it a 13-0 Wolves lead. Taking the direct snap in for his second touchdown of the night. And he's going to extend that single-season rushing touchdown record that he set earlier. Lou's got plenty of games to add to it, so good luck to whoever comes after him because Lou's going <laughs> to uh, presumably going to get a lot more touchdowns before this season is in the books. And His efforts help give the Wolves a 13 to nothing lead as we're Osterling on again for the extra point. And that is... Good, so the Wolves now lead 14 to nothing. First play of the second quarter, a touchdown by Lou Swartz and Connemal Valley. You know, they've had some really nice moments here, have the Blue Jays on defense. Forcing the Wolves to several third downs. Lou Swartz just uh, too much on that. Uh, but when it comes to fourth down and helping the Wolves pick up some, uh, or rather move the chains. Um, granted, I don't want to leave out the passing game. Lou's ability to run the football and the Wolves' really general ability to run the football opened up the passing game a moment ago. That last drive, uh, this t most recent touchdown drive, a big catch by Ezra Osterling. And Swartz was beginning to kind of move towards the line of scrimmage, get close to where... Um, these Blue Jays tacklers could start uh, trying to get the Wolves quarterback. Instead, he stops just short of the line of scrimmage and heaves the ball down to Osterling, who came back for it, gathered it in, and set the Wolves up at the six-yard line, and that's how they eventually got in the end zone. So as much as the Wolves uh, pride themselves on a strong run game, the passing game helping set them up with a first and goal. Another short kick brought in at the 25. Cutting and finding some space there, but brought out of bounds around the 35-yard line was number 10, Philip Ashcombe, the junior, 5'9", 1st and 10 for Connemaw Valley. The Blue Jays were averaging just a bit over 8 points per game. Looking to climb back into this one after the Wolves scored 14 unanswered so far. A little end around. Nice cut back. Breaking a couple tackles, but then is met by Saul Lou Swartz in there along with number 73 for West Shemokin. Yeah, Connor Gervasoni, the tackler there, the sophomore. Trying to get the 
kind of, kind of pat my head and rub my tummy here. Looking at our screen, I know we had to change our links uh, for this broadcast late in the game, or, early, or right before the game started, so I'm trying to update that on the website while I give you a play-by-play -play here. There's a throwing attempt, and then it has to tuck it because the Wolves are able to get in the backfield. Meeting him first there was number 50 for West Shemokin. That was the one and only Nate Silvis, I believe. Or Isaac Slay, rather the first guy on the scene, but uh, Nate Silvis also credited on the play. So another loss for the Blue Jays. They're now facing a third down and 20. I know. So third and a ways to go here for the Blue Jays. Moving from your right to left. Bunch formation once again. Wolves will bunch it themselves. Will end around again and then brought down in the backfield again. Nothing doing there for Devin Chantis. As the Wolves stop him once again behind the line of scrimmage. Just the war in the trenches right now being won by West Shemokin. They're going to mark it as a three yard loss and undoubtedly the Blue Jays will punt. Ball at the 21 yard line. Fourth and 23. Jasper kicks this one away. Wobbler, it's gonna go out right around the 30 yard line. So the Wolves offense that seems to be finding itself here early on Get some prime fill position as the ball bounces sideways out of bounds at the 30-yard line, and that's where Swartz and company will take over with a 14-0 lead and 10.05 remaining here in quarter number one. Snap to Swartz, he's gonna throw again, back to pass. Throwing down the field into some traffic and able to close there were two defenders for Connemal Valley, even though that looked like it might have been over the head of Swartz. Uh, the intended target there was Isaac Schreckengoss, but I'll get these uh, guys' numbers here. Hard numbers to see here. In these blue uniforms. <clears throat> Excuse me. I believe that's number two. I hope I'm right. But uh, Tom Stifler, one of the, no, I'm sorry, the number three. Adam Jasper in the coverage there, helping in the incompletion. Now Clark in the very next play runs the ball down to the Bay 30 yard line, let's say. And they're going to say no gain. So third and 10 for West Shemokin. And this is. <clears throat> where the Blue Jays have done an excellent job here thus far. It's just been fourth down. The Wolves finding ways to move the sticks. And brought down behind the line of scrimmage again. Great penetration there to meet Lou Swartz and bring him down for the loss. And now a fourth and 15. And <clears throat> for as strong as their defense has been, West Shemokin that is, there doesn't surprise me. It looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth down. These uh, rare situations for really any team that you'll see on a Friday night going for it on a fourth and 15. But since the field position is so good and the Wolves have been playing so well on defense, why not? And he's gonna look for Osterling, brings it in for the touchdown, a beautiful pass and a great catch there by Ezra Osterling. And the Wolves take a 20 to nothing lead. Great touch on that pass by Lou Swartz and you know, really give credit to Ezra Osterling who kind of slowed down his route there to kind of use his body as a shield on the defender and then put his hands out, let that ball hit him right in the hands 
And as a result, the Wolves jump out to a 20 to nothing advantage here with still 8.30 left, I'd say 8.31 to be exact, in this second quarter here in Connemal Valley, Pennsylvania. And the extra point by Osterling is good. So as we're doing it all on that uh, particular drive there, bringing in the touchdown catch and putting the extra point through, and the Wolves take a 21 to nothing lead here on this Carson Boyer Funeral Home game night on High Top Sports Network. Carson Boyer Funeral Home serving the Armstrong and Indiana County communities. Also want to thank another one of our, we like to call them our day one sponsors, Schulteis Roofing, the experts in commercial roofing in Western Pennsylvania. If you live really anywhere in Western Pennsylvania, Schulteis Roofing is your go-to. They have a large geographical area in which they serve for your commercial roofing services. Make sure you give them a shout. Been in the commercial low sloped and slope roofing system business for over 23 years and as I said evolved to become one of the most experienced roofing contractors in the entire state not just this region so make sure you give them a call and if you just want to get a quote or get some more information it doesn't hurt to find it out and give them a call at 412-828-7192 and if you just want to do some research on your own check them out online at schulteisroofing.com that's s-c-h-u-l T-H-E-I-S roofing.com. Schulteis Roofing, the leader in commercial roofing. Had a little bit of a squib kick, breaking a tackle and getting some room up the sideline and looks like into Wolves territory. Nice job there by Eric Corhut. Breaking a tackle and making the most of that return. They're going to mark him right at the 50, it looks like. Maybe a a shade in the Wolves territory, we'll say, a half yard in there. So, again, the, can't say this enough, the Blue Jays getting another possession with great field position. This one only second to the one they had where I believe it began at the 48-yard line, so just a yard ahead. We'll see if they can do something with it. Again, formation bunched, direct handoff there. Chaunt is giving it, I believe, to number 44. Thank you. It's going to be, yeah, Tanner George, the junior fullback, getting a carry here. Gain of one. Second down and nine. 7.54 left here in quarter number two. Wolves out in front, 21 to nothing. Wolves' first trip here to Connemal Valley is conference mates with Connemal Valley. That was a nice play design there, and Chauntis able to move forward there, fake handoff, and Chauntis came kind of around from the left side, takes the carry, and brought down around the 40, say 46 and a half yard line. Third down and three for Connemal Valley here. It's the seven minute mark upon us here in quarter number two. Gervasoni, the tackler on that last play. There's a pitch outside, cuts it back inside. Looks like he's gonna get the first down and some more, but he runs into Lou Swartz. And is immediately met there and stopped and play blown dead quickly. Is Tommy Stifler able to move the sticks and the Blue Jays with a big first down here. Gain of seven, I believe that might be their biggest offensive play here thus far. Nice.
nice cut back inside again, very similar to that play we saw earlier where uh, number 16, Devin Chauntis, was able to take the play to the, from that left to right, the pitch, fake pitch out to the left, drew some wolves to that side, and Chauntis able to get five yards out of it. So the last two plays, some of the better, were, better ones, excuse me, in terms of yardage for the Blue Jays thus far. Chauncey gets, gets, gets the pitch outside, cuts it back inside. And he's going to be very close to a first down. It'll be the first time the Blue Jays had gotten a first down you know, prior to the prior to third or fourth down. Or say just short, so I spoke too soon. But uh, third and inches for Connemal Valley. Try to get you some Heritage Conference scores here in a moment. Pitch outside, cutting it back in again. And brought down by Clark along with number 30, or excuse me, 52. That's Jaden Klonowski. But uh, after the first down marker, so another first down for Connemal Valley who really doing well on this drive, comparatively speaking to the last few, looking to make it pay off here with 4.56 left in the second quarter. And another loose football and the Wolves on top of it. And just as things seem to be going the Blue Jays' way, they fumble away this opportunity and the Wolves, Johnny on the spot, able to cover it up. Didn't see who that was who uh, scoop that up. But two fumbles lost now for Connemal Valley. And the Wolves will begin at their own 31-yard line here with 4.51 left. And both these teams really running teams, so that's going to make this game go faster and a clock run. So the Wolves can eat up more time. As I say that, run the football, loose sports on first down, throws it outside. And Meets Osterling at about the 40, or excuse me, 35 yard line. Oh, there's 37 yard line. Good spot there for the Wolves. It's a six yard gain for West Shemokin. Clock continuing to roll, but to finish my thought there a moment ago, uh, the Wolves could very well really milk some clock here. And just a reminder, they will get the second half. Or no, I'm sorry, the, the Connemal Valley will get the second half kickoff, so. That's what makes that uh, turnover that much more costly as Clark rumbles forward and a personal foul as a flag being kicked as well. <laughs> Haven't seen that <laughs> in my uh, years of calling football games. I don't know what the flag did to him, but. So that's going to move the, presumably, help the Wolves. Uh, got the first down, but you could see 15 more. Maybe they'll have offsetting, not sure. Didn't get to really see what had happened until the first flag came in. Well, we have a chance to uh, thank another one of our awesome sponsors, Schaefer's HVAC, the national anthem sponsor here tonight. Now in its 50th year of operation, Schaefer's HVAC Incorporated in Catanning has been a leader in heating and cooling solutions and serves thousands of families and businesses in Armstrong, Allegheny, Butler, Indiana, and Westmoreland counties. Uh, with promptness and integrity, Schaefer's services all major brands of furnaces, air conditioners, and hot water tank systems, and they pride themselves on customer service and their ability to deliver quality goods and services. Schaefer's offers warranties. They're fully licensed and insured, and they will provide emergency, emergency service if you should ever need it. Make sure you give them a call today uh, for an estimate at 724-543-2615. We'll give you that estimate in-house 
or over the phone. Thank you to Schaefer's HVAC. I also want to thank uh, one of my favorite places in the entire world, Bird's Foot Golf Club. Uh, if you want me to give my own personal live read on that, uh, I spent about three days there a week when I possibly can. Now that the fall sports season is among us, I uh, haven't been able to be there as much, but still squeezing it in when I can. And if you're ever anywhere near the Freeport Sarver area, I highly, highly, highly recommend taking in Bird's Foot Golf Club, just well-designed, uh, beautifully well taken care of by Travis and all the awesome people out there. Trevor, the golf pro, just an awesome staff, always uh, there to help uh, however they can. And uh, just a great price course for the conditions and how nice it is. So if you're ever looking to, for a getaway play, if you're tuning in from here from Connemore Valley, for instance, make sure you top or stop uh, in at Bird's Foot Golf Club or a nice little getaway golf trip as Henry Clark brings that ball up past the 40-yard line and brought down around the 37-yard line. Or, yep, 37. We move the sticks once again for West Shemokin. The clock at 3.56 and we'll continue to roll. Wolves come into the game with a record of two and three, so a win tonight would get them back to 500 and get them on track to reach the playoffs. The Wolves still now in their 24th season yet to accomplish that elusive playoff victory as Clark able to drag a couple tacklers forward. Nice run there by Henry Clark. But the Wolves again in year 24 hoping to reach the playoffs as they did a season ago. But this time, put a win in the wins column for the first time in school history. 3.20 left, Swartz in the gun, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, nice job again by faking it. Swartz gonna get outside, rumble forward. Not just strong, he's fast and he's in. Four, six, Lou Swartz to Pater. And the Wolves now up 27 to nothing. Swartz just doing an excellent job there of disguising that handoff. It's hard for me up here in the booth to tell who the ball carrier is until the play really starts developing, but that's a, just something I'm really noticing here. My first chance to catch West Shemokin football, not just this season, but uh, thanks to the, uh, the great calls last year from Nico Buffone and Sean McCullough, who held it down every game last year. Um, my chance to catch the Wolves for the first time in person in the last two years. And extra point good by Osterling. But Swartz again doing an excellent job of disguising these handoffs or sometimes fake handoffs. And as a result, opened up some space on the left-hand side. And Swartz able to take it to the house and put the Wolves up 28 now to nothing. And thanks for joining us here on High Top Sports Network. Make sure you find us on Facebook and Twitter. Give us a follow. Give us a like. It only helps us give you more of uh, the product you're watching here tonight, and that's high school sports on it's a crisp, beautiful Friday night here in Connemore Valley, Pennsylvania. Nice trip down here. It's nice when you're coming from where we are in Armstrong County and you head east because I'm actually a Heritage Conference alum myself. You notice when you start making these trips east, you start running into a little bit more of a mountainous kind of terrain, and it's so pretty this time of year as the leaves are kind of starting to change. It's only going to be the case here in the next few years. So our broadcast uh, link on the website um, is not active at the moment. I've been trying to fix that, but I can't get logged in. But... Uh, what you could do, folks, is go to hightopsportsnetwork.com and you can hit broadcast search right at the top of your screen and that'll help you find this game. We've got three other games on the network here tonight. We'll give you some score updates here presented by Carson Boyer Funeral Home, the out-of-town scores brought to you by Brian Myers and the fine people there. This one out of bounds at the 35-36 yard line. But uh, the out-of-town scores for you, end of one, 
Northern Cambria 14, Cambria, or, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Connemal Township 3. So Northern Cambria 14, Connemal Township 3. Cambria Heights 13, Homer Center nothing. Homer actually just getting on the board with 5.03 left to make it 13 to 7. Uh, in the end of one, you had a Penn's Manor, United Valley tie at zero apiece. So those are just the early scores to come in here so far. So a 15 yard penalty against the Blue Jays here, or holding penalty on the return. So the ball will start at the 28 yard line. Ball. Chauntus there. Bring the ball out to the 37 yard line. Very close to a first down. The head referee is going to tell the teams to back. Off, so they're going to maybe do a, a measurement. They are. Why you do a measurement on a second down, I don't know. But Chaunce is bringing it very close to the sticks there, and we'll see whether or not it is a, chain or a, a new set of downs. But, again, early scores there. You had – oh, there's some more up here. I don't know if I take that back. Yeah, most recent one with 5.03 left in the second quarter. Cambria Heights 13, Homer Center 7. End of the first, you had Northern Cambria leading 14 to nothing over Connemal Township. That's going to be confusing for somebody like me who uh, you got two Connemal teams in this conference and uh, neither of which were in the conference when I uh, was participating in sports, but we'll get used to it. Kind of looking like the old Appalachian Conference from prior to the year 2000 when the Heritage Conference came to be. Looks like the Blue Jays are going to pick up the first down and maybe a fumble there. And the, it is a fumble, and the Wolves come up with yet another one. The third force fumble and the fumble recovery by West Shemokin. Defense tonight by the Wolves stifling the Blue Jays with these turnovers. Wolves defense not having the strongest of years, uh, giving up 28 a game. Oh, sorry, I got to get that score updated for you. But uh, Wolves have 28 on the scoreboard, and that's what they give up a game. They average just about 27, so they've now surpassed that mark with plenty of time left here in this contest, 240 left in the second quarter. But the defense... Uh, Coming up big here, Swartz going to roll to his left. He's going to throw across his body, and how he gets it out that far, I don't know. And back shoulder catch. No, nope, not able to bring it in, but Luke Swartz throwing across his body that sideline. Readjusting for it was Isaac Schreckengoss, but he's unable to bring it in. And a man, I don't think he could have thrown it much better than that. Brings up a second down, 10 to go. Clock stops, 2.31 left, second quarter. Three receivers bunched to the bottom of your screen for Lou Swartz and company and said Henry Clark will get the handoff, get past the line of scrimmage and be brought down on a two-yard, maybe three-yard gain. Sets up third down and seven. Two fifteen left now, second quarter of play. West Shemokin threatening again after another forced fumble. The third such forced and recovered fumble by West Shemokin. 
you say at least fumble recovery. A couple of those were bad handoff and a bad snap, but Swartz going to keep this one cut outside. Great block there. A little stutter step. Lou is going to put his head down and bring the pile out to the 25-yard line. Lou Swartz showing off that strength of his. When he puts that shoulder down and tries to move the pile, he sure can more often than not. And a new set of downs a reward for Lou's efforts. 142 left, clock rolling. Swartz and company back to the line of scrimmage rather quickly, play clock at 28 seconds, so. No real hurry for the Wolves. Swartz gonna throw. This one, no one home. Miscommunication there by Swartz and his receivers. I think he might have been looking for Osterling, and Osterling broke his route. And started heading towards the middle of the field. Another score updated uh, here, provided by Carson Boyer Funeral Home. Cambria Heights now with 2.34 left in the second quarter. Takes a 21-7 lead over Homer Center and the Wildcats. There's Clark breaks a couple tackles and then brought down though finally there by number 34 for Connemal Valley, Ethan McNulty. <clears throat> nice job there to wrap him up and bring him down after he was able to get outside. Still a gain of two and now a third and eight under a minute to play here in the second quarter. First half winding down quickly. Swartz, gonna look to his left, gonna play breaking down. He's gonna run it. Swartz, stutter step, breaks, almost breaks that tackle, but way to tackle low there. I believe that was number 16, Devin Chantis. But a first down nonetheless for Lou Swartz. Play broke down and Wolves able to continue this drive. 37 seconds left and a timeout called by John McCullough's team. Give you a chance here now to thank another one of our awesome sponsors and folks, as I always say, when you're in the need of any of their, their services or goods, you seek them out first, and one of which is Steffi's Country Catering. Big uh, supporters of Terry and uh, his Sunday specials. Make sure you check out the Sunday specials. Look up Terry Steffi on Facebook. Uh, it's, it'll say that it's uh, maybe portioned for six people. It really could feed 12. Uh, that's the great thing about Steffi's Country Catering. They will not uh, short you on quantity, and I can speak for the quality as well. They won't short you on that either. Terry and the staff, just excellent at what they do. They cater birthday parties, weddings, anniversaries, any event you could possibly think of. Steffi's Country Catering is your go-to. Make sure you tell Terry that High Top Sports Network sent you. Might be getting the Sunday special this Sunday, as a matter of fact. Uh, I've been talking about it. It's a High Top Sports Network headquarters. we got a nice little TV. I say little, but it's about 65 inches. Uh, we like to take in the game there and eat our Terry's and we can get back to work and get ready for the next uh, set of games and the next Friday nights. We do, well, Of course, we do volleyball throughout the week as well. But Swartz threading the needle there. Just an absolute dart by Lou Swartz. Able to connect with Ezra Osterling for the touchdown. Osterling with his second reception touchdown of the contest. And the Wolves put it in again. Make it a 34 to nothing advantage with 32 seconds left in this second quarter. And by land and by sea, as the saying goes, but by air and by ground here in this one. Uh, the Wolves doing it all. Second Touchdown reception by Ezra Osterling, a terrific volleyball player for the Wolves. Done nothing but win district championships as Ezra since uh, being on the varsity squad. Wolves reigning district six champions in the volleyball court. Head coach Scott Craig and Matt Melinda Osterling also coaching in that team. And the extra point is good, so the Wolves Lead 35 to nothing. The Blue Jays so far with no answer for Lou Swartz and 
And again, doing it by air and on the ground are the Wolves. Sports in this game, sending the school's single season rushing mark along with the single season touchdown mark for a program that's now in its 24th season of existence. School started in turn of the millennium. I say turn of the century, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to say millennium instead. As uh, you don't get to say that very often. I won't get to say it again, I can tell you that, uh, Ryan is writing stickers at me. Uh, I won't be around for that, I can promise you that. Not unless uh, advancements in, in medicine and the such uh, really take a, a an aggressive uh, climb towards increasing longevity, <laughs> lifespans and longevity. Uh, yep, yep, just give me the old Ted Williams uh, treatment. Put me in a, in a freezer vault. Thaw me out later. Never really understood that, but uh, that's a topic for another day. I actually watched a documentary on Ted Williams, and that was a big part of it. And turns out it actually wasn't a part of his wishes. <laughs> his son decided to do it on his own. So, anyways, with that uh, out of the way, Osterling will kick it off here with just 32 seconds left in the first half. That one hits the player in the front row and then brought in and breaking a couple tackles there was Eric Corhut, the sophomore. And a flag coming in late. Looks like it's going to go against Connemal Valley. Ashton Wilson is going to be the one flagged here. Just a lot of flags. And I mentioned this game would be going quickly just because of the number of times that both of these teams like to run the football well. The one thing that's prevented that uh, clock from running at times has been these penalties by both teams. And uh, that the case here with 25 seconds left in the second quarter. Blue Jays drawing yet another piece of yellow laundry that will move them back towards their own end zone. Also, too, uh, I have a chance, I haven't mentioned this yet. Uh, this broadcast is copyrighted by High Top Sports Network for the private use of our audience. Any use of this broadcast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without expressed written consent of High Top Sports Network is prohibited. So that means if you put up clips on Facebook or Twitter, just give us a credit. That's all you got to do. You can use our highlights all day long. Just uh, holler, at your, holler at your boys and give us a photo credit or video credit. Whistle stops the play. It looks like maybe a timeout here by Connemal Valley. It is indeed. So we will take a timeout. Your score, West Shemokin 35, Connemal Valley nothing. We'll be near the end of the second quarter here on High Top Sports Network. Armstrong Indoor Athletics, located at 132 South Grand Street Avenue in downtown Katanning, offers a state-of-the-art training facility and top-tier instruction by experienced coaches to help turn your youngster into the best baseball or softball player they can be. Batting cage and bullpen lane rentals are available for 30 to 60 minute sessions, and you can also sign your baseball or softball player up for private hitting, pitching. Right, back to the action. Sorry about our Cutting our friends at Armstrong Indoor Athletic short, but the play continues here after the timeout and back to the line of scrimmage was the ball carrier, but nothing more. And it's number 21 taking the carry there for the Blue Jays. Elijah Dar, another senior on this Connemal Valley Roster, and that will do it for the first half of play. West Shemokin out to a 35 to nothing lead over Connemal Valley here on this Carson Boyer game night on High Top Sports Network. My name again is Joe Rhodes. I'm going to send it down to the field as we can take in the sights and sounds of Friday nights with the presentation of both the Connemal Valley and West Shemokin bands here on High Top Sports. We'll be back for third quarter action. We'll see them.
Armstrong Indoor Athletics, located at 132 South Grand Street Avenue in downtown Katanning, offers a state-of-the-art training facility and top-tier instruction by experienced coaches to help turn your youngster into the best baseball or softball player they can be. Batting cage and bullpen lane rentals are available for 30 to 60 minute sessions, and you can also sign your baseball or softball player up for private hitting, pitching, fielding, and catching instruction with our Nova Group staff. Be sure to visit Armstrong Indoor Athletics online at AIA.team or call them at 724-599-9761 for more information today.
And welcome back to High Top Sports Network. Joe Rhodes here bringing you the action. Ryan Farster on camera. Wolves take a 35 to nothing lead into this second half. Two receiving touchdowns for Ezra Osterling, a part of that equation. Ezra with 90 receiving yards to his name. Lou Swartz, 134 rushing yards on 15 carries, 120 in the air for Lou. Those are your first half numbers here on your favorite sports network. That is a shoe as its logo, High Top Sports Network. I think we're the only one. Can't think of any others, at least off the top of my head. So the Blue Jays will begin at the 35. Not bad field position once again for Connemore Valley. Looking to get the offense started again. Three turnovers in the first half. Fumbles, that is, by Connemore Valley. Going to begin here, carry out to the right. A little pitch and stumbles forward, loses his footing, but a nice job there to find the hole. Or Devin Chaunt has called his name and number several times here so far tonight. Six yard gain there by Chantis and bring up a second and four. Quickly just give you some first half numbers, uh, or excuse me, uh, first half scores. I guess around the area scores presented by Carson Boyer Funeral Home. Halftime, Pens or United Valley seven, Penn's Manor nothing. Carry here and Powell keeps moving and brought down about a yard short of the first down stick. So bring up a third and one. So I'm not sure whether it's uh, precautionary or what, but uh, no Lou Swartz out there on defense for West Shemokin in his first drive of the game. But the, the scores again, um, halftime Cambry Heights 21, Homer Center seven, River Valley 40, and my uh, alma mater Marion Center eight. Stingers taking a thumping by the Panthers of River Valley. And a first down there by Stifler will move the chains for the Blue Jays. So a nice promising start there. Exactly what you'd want coming out of the locker room here at halftime. 48 yard line. The third quarter action again. Ryan uh, very observant there, noticing Lou not out in the field for West Shemokin. This time, penetration by the Wolves, able to meet the ball carrier immediately. Elijah Dar, nothing doing there, maybe a half yard. Set up a second down and nine and a half. <laughs> Gervasoni again on the tackle, got to call his name quite a few times. He's getting some good penetration. It is the sophomore, listed 6'2", 295 pounds. Connor Gervasoni. Tight formation by the Blue Jays, if the case has been all night. Taking the snap there is number 21, making a nice move back towards the inside. Number 21, Elijah Dar was bottled up a little bit ago. Breaking loose there, big carry there. Probably the biggest gainer of the night for the Blue Jays. A fresh set of downs. 9-14 on the clock here, third quarter of play. Wolves leading 35 to nothing. It's a Heritage Conference matchup, the first time these two teams have faced off with that title to this game's name. Don't know historically if these two teams have played, but and again, there's Dar again, cutting it outside, nice gain. Blocks holding up well here for Connemore Valley on this drive. Seven yards gained on that play. Second and three, 8.33 left. And instead of Going to the right where you've seen some success on this particular drive. 
Conemaugh Valley takes it left and another nice gain. So the direction not making a difference is Tom Stifler getting into the act there and setting uh, the Blue Jays up with another first and 10. Seven yard gain, ball at the 40, excuse me, no, I'm sorry. The 20, uh, 25 yard line, I believe that is, yep. Just a hair inside of it, 7.44 on the clock. And the Blue Jays will call a timeout, so we will too here and thank one of our several sponsors and one of which is Armstrong Indoor Athletics, a just a beautiful facility right in Catanning, Pennsylvania, offering uh, many services, including lessons in baseball and softball, but also too, they have that great indoor uh, ball field uh, now, the recently, a recent addition rather to the AIA facility. So you, even if you're not baseball or softball, you can run it out, indoor soccer, happens there and some other sports. Uh, when the weather starts going south like it does here in Pennsylvania, you can rent that space out uh, for your indoor soccer team or whatever program it is that uh, you are a part of. And of course, uh, Coach Keith Schaefer, Keith, uh, Coach Pete Harmon offering instructions, pitching, hitting. Those that know uh, much about uh, Pete Harmon, he was the hitting coach for the Armstrong girls softball team at Made it back-to-back uh, -back state championships and then the state semifinals this most recent year. So Pete knows a thing or two about swinging the sticks. And uh, you can get all of their great services at in Armstrong Indoor Athletics. Check them out online at AIA.team. No .com necessary in their domain. It's a AIA.team. We'll take you to their website. Or just give them a call at 724-599-9761. Located right there, 138 South Grand Avenue in Beautiful town of Catanning. Or as the Native Americans called it, Catani. <laughs> Another reverse as we saw earlier in the game. And this one, similar result, nothing doing there. Brought down was Stifler at the, about a yard behind the line of scrimmage. Seems to me that the <clears throat> those quick, kind of quick hitting handoffs are the ones that have gotten the Blue Jays in the most success. It's kind of not allowing the Wolves to get penetration. That one kind of longer to develop and thus the Wolves getting penetration and able to wrap up Stifler behind the line of scrimmage. So second and 11, 657 left. And a great penetration there by the Wolves and thrown to the ground there with the tackle, number 73. Yeah, who else? Connor, Jervis Sony. Having a big night on defense is the big man. Another tackle, this one behind the line of scrimmage and going to make it a third and say about a third and 15, third and 14 for Connemal Valley who trying to get on the scoreboard here. Being shut out right now, 35 to nothing by the visiting Wolves. Mentioned that Connemal Valley new to the Heritage Conference. Connemal Township new as well. Cambria Heights, a recent addition. Portage also on their maiden voyage as a conference mates with the, the usuals. And uh, Cramp looks like for the down West Shemokin player. Jen Blystone. Going to walk out with a little less promptness, knowing that uh, just the cramp. And a uh, good sign there for West Shemokin is number two, Lou Swartz, trots on right behind Jen Blystone. I give a shout out to Jen. She's always a, a busy lady. <laughs> One time I saw her, she was watching the baseball and softball games and was getting called both ways there. And then uh, I think she said she had to stick around for a volleyball game directly after that. So she... Uh, Definitely earns her uh, her paycheck <laughs> without a doubt. A big part of the West Shemokin Athletic Department and all the student athletes uh, get banged up from time to time. She's uh, quite the resource for the West Shemokin student body and athletic department. 
want to have a chance. I want to thank uh, friends at Olson Chiropractic, Dr. Ryan Olson, the staff. Uh, when the aches and pains of everyday life have you stuck on the sidelines, make sure to visit the caring professionals at Olson Chiropractic at 159 Butler Road. Ryan obviously has great knowledge of the sports-related injuries and how to recover from those. Son, of course, Caden Olson, the University of Pennsylvania quarterback. Back to play here, 158 left, or excuse me, 558 left in the third quarter, and whistles blow, flag on the field. So offside, so lined up uh, offside with the Wolves there, and again, the laundry frequent here tonight on the field. This beautiful grass field, as I mentioned uh, early on in the game, somebody making the move to field turf it's always great to catch a game on grass the the way the game was played for the longest time and now it just seems like these grass fields are fewer and fewer nice play there well developing and he's gonna get outside and he is gonna get in does Tom Stifler the senior 4-6 and that was a well-designed play there by Connemal Valley about three different guys in the backfield that seemed like they were involved in that play, a couple fakes, and then Stifler able to take it to the left side, and no one was home for the Wolves, and Stifler takes advantage and puts six on the board for Connemal Valley with 5.31 left in the quarter number three. So a great start to this second half, despite the uh, score on your scoreboard. The Blue Jays leading in the second half at least so far. Six to nothing, trying to make it. Uh, two point conversion possibly, and a, th a throw, the first of the game, and incomplete. Jasper trying to find number seven there in the far side of the end zone there, Eric Corhut, but no good, and the score will remain 35 to six, West Shemokin leading Connemal Valley here on High Top Sports Network. Oh. Sorry, I had a little trouble there. <laughs> Changing the score. Uh, gave West Shemokin six points and uh, somehow gave Connemal Valley 12 points, and for those that know, uh, not a math guy. Even when it comes to simple adding and subtracting, not my forte. Uh, I, I like to think of myself more as a sports guy. Not, uh, I told this story one time on the air, I think last year during an Armstrong-Indiana game, that uh, my math teachers would always tell me, you know, when you go out in the real world, you can't take a calculator with you places. Well, again, I'm not going to name any names, former math teachers, but guess what I have now? A calculator. It's called my cell phone. So, haha. <laughs> Your phone, uh, unless you start Googling and stuff, the calculator's right there, but uh, it's hard to find out who the Cy Young winner was in 1956 of the American League. But uh, the calculator right there. <laughs> Trying to cut back was number 33 for the Wolves. And of course, uh, Henry Clark, the junior. He's wrapped up and brought down. Probably I have to say the worst field position of the Wolves. Well, I guess they did start a drive at their own two-yard line. A great punt by the Blue Jays early on in the game. Set the Wolves back at the two. So that would have been their worst starting position. But this uh, not terrific either. Ball at the 16-yard line. Definitely uh, fair to say that Connemal Valley has had better starting field position here uh, overall. As uh, no Lou Swartz again in on that play. Carrying the ball was Clark, but uh, back in the uh, in the quarterback position is number eight, Ryan Boer, who we have seen um, in that position a couple times so far this year. A game, I'm trying to remember what it was, a game where the Wolves lost, it was, uh, Primarily Boer at the quarterback position. 
So maybe just precautionary. We saw Lou come out in the field. And uh, well, that young man's future, you know, the game's uh, still ahead of him, or priority now, especially in a game that's 35 to six. Boer, handoff. Boer kind of a uh, late handoff there. He was coming here to this near side and kind of had to reach to his right to give that ball to Clark, who brought down for a very short gain. 4.13 left and Wolves will try to extend this drive or the Blue Jays will likely get the ball and again starting good field position if they would have to punt this one away as they are set up at the 18 yard line right now as it stands. Boer and company. Boer gets the snap. He's going to roll out to his right. Trying to throw on the run, and just not enough under that one to try to find the team's leading receiver, Ezra Osterling, and that one's going to fall short. And the Wolves will send the punting unit out there. And oh, Lou, <laughs> so Lou back in the game. So that just tells you right there that it's likely that. Uh, this is going to be, uh, Lou, uh, he keeps kind of doing that with his legs. Some of that right, maybe a right knee there, hard to say, but uh, clearly it's one to just kind of keep Lou safe and not to anything that's uh, more uh, damaging to that young man. Lou gets that one away and gets it away well. Ball caught around the 46 yard line of the Blue Jays. Crossing midfield is the returner and wrapped up around the West Shimokan 49 and that's again where the Blue Jays will start and start with great field position once more. So good to see that Lou Swartz at least came out for that punt to let you kind of know that this isn't as dire bad as it could have been because um, obviously that uh, as I mentioned before that young man's future and uh, the game's still ahead of him or a little more important than a Heritage Conference game on the final week of September and a 35 to six game, so. A very spread out design here for the Blue Jays, but a similar outcome as we saw in the first half, a handoff and then a flag, of course. After Chaunas gets back to the line of scrimmage, we'll see what this flag is in regards to. Holding against the defense, so a rare defensive holding call will move the ball forward. Help the Blue Jays out, who managed no gain on that first carry of this drive. So a 10-yard penalty and fresh set of downs, I think, will go with that. Yep. Talk about the, some of the more underrated folks at a game, the chain gang. Holler at those guys. <clears throat> Try to give you some more uh, Armstrong County related. If you're tuning in uh, back in Armstrong County, we'll give you some Armstrong County updates here momentarily. Saw that Armstrong was losing to North Catholic at halftime. There's a nice run up the gut by Aaron Gillett, the freshman. Or, wait. I heard a different name over the PA, so maybe I got that wrong. I apologize. Another nice gain, though, by Connemal Valley. Six-yard gain. Sets up a second and four. 132 left here in the third quarter. Moving right along. Just on the sweep and able to get past the first layer and brought down around the 25-yard line was number two, Tom Stifler. Stifler with that touchdown to start the second half. Gets another nice chunk play, and this offense certainly moving a little more briskly than it was in the first half. Good adjustments made at halftime for Connemal Valley. We have the ball deep in West Shemokin territory, the ball at the 25. One minute 
And nine seconds left here in quarter number three. <clears throat> Gonna keep it, does Jasper. Makes a couple little moves and brought down for about a, say three, three and a half, four yard game. And the, and the yellow laundry that has been frequent here on this natural grass surface is back again. Face mask against West Shimokin, so a, another Sort of unnecessary penalty and unnecessary mistake by West Shemokin. And you know, so far those have not cost the Wolves, but you gotta figure down this stretch run as the Wolves try to position themselves for playoff contention, those things will come back to bite you. And so far tonight, um, been just a couple miscues that have been sort of uncharacteristic for West Shemokin. Just the five yard variety though, so it sets up a second and three. 43 seconds left, third quarter. Another throw, and the pocket kind of collapsing there on Adam Jasper, and he's brought down. <clears throat> Excuse me. You get to kind of feel for Jasper as the as whistles blow. I'm really curious what this one's about. Looks like a timeout. Yep, timeout by. Cottonwood Valley, but I was about to say Jasper not throwing his first pass until the second half here. And right there, that pocket was collapsing, sort of uh, hard to feel that pressure when you haven't really felt such uh, something like the sort really up to this point. Again, there's that throw and that two point conversion, but the uh, passes really in general here in this game, few and far between of the Wolves as we know, John McCullough, uh, Harry Beckwith, Disciple, Katanning, the wing T, famously uh, part of the offense there at Katanning for years and years, and Coach McCullough playing under Harry Beckwith brought it here to West Shemokin. And uh, really, you saw it for many, many years under Coach McCullough. And then when he had the luxury of having Bo Swartz and, of course, Lou Swartz, uh, the passing game certainly became more part of the equation then as those two or just a really dynamic uh, duo in the passing game. Remember the Wolves that season, it would have been Bo's senior year. They played Portage in the playoffs and we were lucky enough to be at that game. And a couple of the catches that Lou had were just uh, <laughs> mind boggling to say the least. Lou, some of the better hands of any of the athletes we cover, many sport really. We've seen him use them in basketball too. And uh, brother Bo, a great arm, able to put him on him pretty, pretty well. And, Fortunately for the Wolves that night, they fell to Portage and a couple late calls in that game didn't go the Wolves' way. Very questionable calls. And Wolves still without that uh, elusive playoff victory as a result. And that last play brought down short, fourth and five, and be the final play of the third quarter here at Connemal Valley as the Wolves still own a sizable lead, but cutting into it ever so slightly were the Blue Jays who put six on the board without letting the Wolves do much. Only one offensive drive for West Shemokin in that third quarter. The first drive by Connemal Valley chewing up a lot of clock. And as a result, just 12 minutes remain in this one. Your score, West Shemokin 35, Connemal Valley 6 here on High Top Sports Network. I want to thank, uh, again, our scoreboard sponsor. You see him up there at the top of your screen, Schulteis Roofing, a leader in commercial roofing systems, be it uh, sloped or low sloped roof systems, they are your leader. Really, they travel all over Western PA, so if you're sitting somewhere and you're thinking, oh, they're probably just serving you know, Armstrong County in that area, nope, they are all over the map. They've been installing commercial low sloped and sloped roofing systems for over 23 years, and as I've said numerous times, have evolved into the best uh, roofing contractor in the state of Pennsylvania. Again, their growth and their ability to cover such territory is evidence of that. So make sure you check them out online at schulteisroofing.com. Or you can give them a call and say hi to Jenny and all the awesome people down there. 412-828-7192. Schulteis Roofing. 
Sponsor of West Shemokin Athletics. There's a dart right there, a little bit high. Did a good job of getting rid of it quickly was Adam Jasper. And uh, the ball will go back to West Shemokin now with the clock rolling here in quarter number four. So you're going to see heavy doses now of Ryan Boer, the sophomore, 5'8", 160. Also plays linebacker for the Wolves. Boer flanked by Henry Clark to his right. Gives it to Clark, kind of a late handoff, that high snap. Kind of delayed things a little bit for him, but able to get it to Henry Clark, who scampers out for about a four-yard gain, three-yard gain. And a whistle stops play. As a West Shemokin player is slow to get up. That's number 52. Turn that. Number 52, that was for West Shemokin. Uh, Jaden Klonowski. So while they tend to, Mr. Klonowski, we will take a quick break here on High Top Sports Network. For Ryan Farster, my name is Joe Rhodes. We'll see you around the turn. Steffi's Country Catering prepares home-style made-from-scratch dishes that will have you convinced mom made it. Whatever the occasion, Steffi's Country Catering will have you coming back for every event year-round. Find us on Facebook to place an order or to see our Sunday specials or call 724-548-5047. And welcome back to High Top Sports Network. The aforementioned Jen Blystone still tending to Jaden Klonowski. And while she does, I'm going to take a peek here at our broadcast that we have here on High Top Sports Network. Again, four on the network this evening. Armstrong at North Catholic. And as I go to view it, it's a commercial. So skip that one. Come back to it. Uh, big rivalry game at Freeport tonight. Shadyside Academy paying a visit to the Yellow Jackets after they had a dramatic uh, victory a season ago did the Yellow Jackets. They're lined up for a field goal, it looks like, right now. They are, and it's blocked. Uh, but Shadyside Academy now holding on to a 24-20 to lead in that one. Uh, we also have Highlands at Mars, and that score a 35-13 to advantage for the Fighting Planets of Mars under... Head coach Eric Kasparovich, formerly of, of Pine Richland fame. See what we got here when we go back to this. That's Klonowski up off the field. Hopping on that one leg and just a cramp looks like, so that's good. Klonowski, an important part of that uh, West Shemokin team. And Man, oh man, I turned on this Armstrong North Catholic game and the Riverhawks now ahead 21 to 20. So they just kicked off, so they must have just scored. But uh, Riverhawks fighting their way back in that one. There's Boer, throws that one in bad position. As Ezra Osterling was being led right into an oncoming defender, it goes off his hands, and luckily nothing. Dramatic hit was hit or took place there and bring up a second down, or excuse me, third down and seven. 10 31 left here in this fourth and final quarter of this Heritage Conference clash between the Conwell Valley Blue Jays and the West Shemokin Wolves. Joe Rhodes here bringing your first West Shemokin game in over three seasons ago, not this year so far. Last year, as I said, Nico Buffon and Sean McCullough driving the train and doing it quite well for you. And uh, it's my first opportunity to do a game since I guess 2021. Just a bit short there are the Wolves, so decisions, decisions here. Fourth down and one. So Boer will stay out in the field and stay close to the line of scrimmage, indicating the Wolves will go for it. 
Hard count there. Blue Jays don't bite. Boer will take the snap. Henry Clark gets it up the gut and he will plunge forward for the first down. So the sticks will move. And West Shemokin will continue this drive. We were going to uh, talk to Lou Swartz after this one, but um, considering he's taking a breather here, maybe we'll. Uh, well, we're about to get an interview with Lou and put that online so you can hear to the new school record holder for rushing yards in a season. Rushing touchdowns in a season as well. Handing the reins over to Ryan Boer. Boer, quick throw out. Osterling catches. Nice shoestring catch by Osterling, who's wrapped up and rolled out of bounds around the 45-yard line. 8.32 left fourth quarter. Again, we'll keep you posted on some of these other games that are happening both in the Heritage Conference and around Armstrong County, the county in which the Wolves reside. Also want to shout out any of the Connemaw Valley folks tuning in. Nice to have you aboard and hopefully we'll have some more Connemaw Valley on the slate here as you guys are a part of the Heritage Conference. Boer takes the snap. Clark she has a tackler, keeps it moving, and kind of runs into his own man there. But a first down, I think they're going to give Clark anyways. He ran into, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Isaac Schreckengost. And, or no, Andrew Plavi. I keep saying that these numbers, are, they, the numbers on one side, and there's a second set of numbers. One is just to indicate the number on the raw, like the number of the jersey, and then one, one is the position on the roster, so just one through 30, for instance, on this one. But... Uh, I apologize, I've been calling uh, Andrew Plavi, Isaac Schreckengost. I need to forget about this one column completely. <laughs> so a first down, 10 to go, 7.18 left on the clock. Ryan Boer running the show right now for West Shemokin. Gives the handoff to Henry Clark, who's going to drive forward and get about a gain of four. Set up a second down and six. And a timeout called. Officials timeout. A injured player for Connemal Valley. Or excuse me, West Shemokin. So while Jen Blystone continues her busy night, we are going to thank another one of our wonderful sponsors here on High Top Sports Network. We'll be right back. Armstrong Indoor Athletics, located at 132 South Grand Street Avenue in downtown Katanning, offers a state-of-the-art training facility and top-tier instruction by experienced coaches to help turn your youngster into the best baseball or softball player they can be. Batting cage and bullpen lane rentals are available for 30 to 60 minute sessions, and you can also sign your baseball or softball player up for private hitting, pitching, fielding, and catching instruction with our Nava Group staff. Be sure to visit Armstrong Indoor Athletics online at AIA.team or call them at 724-599-9761 for more information today. So the injured player was Connor Gervasoni, but he luckily makes it off under his own power, so he looked to be okay. Maybe just another cramp and another whistle. Time out by West Shemokin and John McCullough does not look happy to have to use that one. But the Wolves burn one anyways. 6.42 left. And I mentioned both these teams predicated on the run game. And that would lead you to believe this game would move along quickly. But the number of flags and stoppages really uh, not allowing it to unfold like that. Uh, take a look here again at uh, the other games. I'm really curious about this Armstrong North Catholic game. North Catholic now driving there at the Armstrong 21-yard line. Armstrong with a one-point lead here in the fourth quarter at that uh, particular game. A couple of really good games here on the network tonight. As for the, the rivalry game between Freeport and 
Shadyside Academy. It's 24 to 21. Also likely in the fourth quarter, even though our friends over there have it listed as the first quarter. And then lastly, the uh, Highlands and Mars game. Mars out to a 41 to 13 lead over Highlands. So big offensive showing there by the Fighting Planets. And Henry Clark runs and bounces off a referee, tries to get outside. He's going to do a little stutter step, cut it back in the middle, and he's wrapped up right around the 10-yard line. A big collision there between the uh, referee and Henry Clark. So Clark having a really nice night, be it uh, Boer at the quarterback position or Lou Swartz. And uh, he picks up a nice chunky yardage there and gets the Wolves inside the Ryan Bowser State Farm red zone. Hopefully we'll have some more Heritage Conference. up oh, right here we do. So another out of town score. Presented by Carson Boyer Funeral Home and Monuments. Monuments uh, created to honor a loved one or various reasons. Really cool things that they do there with their monuments, so make sure you check them out. Got to end of the third quarter, River Valley 40, Marion Center 16. That one almost brought in by Osterling. That would have been a ridiculous catch. Almost looked like it was one-handed but broken up, nice defensive play there by, I believe that was number 23, if I'm not mistaken, Logan uh, Heenland. Heinland? Heenland? Oh, sorry. Oh, that was, oh, that was Devin Blair. I thought it was Logan uh, Heinland. That's the name there. But instead it was uh, Blair breaking up the play there for Connemore Valley. A second down and 10 now. Five minutes left. Fourth quarter. Again, Ryan Booer in at quarterback. Not sure if Lou is hurt or just they're giving him a break. For the number of times that Lou gets hit in a game, he deserves a break. But there is Henry Clark, who, again, is having a nice drive here. Gets the ball down to the five-yard line. And... About a yard short of the um, stick, so no first down here. And basically, if the Wolves can get a yard, they'll get a fresh set of downs, but being so close to the end zone, now being third and 10, can only maybe be two plays. Boer takes the snap, gives it to Clark. Clark up the gut and into the end zone. Four, six, I believe. Nothing official yet. Yep, that is in. So Henry Clark with a touchdown run from the five yard line and the Wolves tack on six more, make it 41 to six here as we near the end of the fourth quarter, 352 left. And Ezra Osterling will be on to, Ezra Osterling will be on to uh, attempt the extra point. So the Wolves offense still doing a swell job as Boer leads the touchdown drive instead of Lou Swartz. And as Rosterling puts it through the uprights and makes it a 42 to six West Shemokin lead here in quarter number four. Mentioned the out of town scores presented by Carson Boyer Funeral Home. Thank you to Carson Boyer Funeral Home. Armstrong County Commissioner Brian Myers and the fine folks there help you during your time in need. And at a time like such, you need uh, caring professionals and people that know what they're doing and do it the right way. And that's certainly how things are conducted at Carson Boyer Funeral Home and Monuments. Obviously a long time sponsor of us here on High Top Sports Network and we are incredibly grateful for their support along with all of our other sponsors. You know, be it Schulteis Roofing, another one of my favorites. Jenny and the gang, Schulteis Roofing, awesome folks. So have uh, Phoenix Physical Therapy. And Dr. Brian over there at uh, the Rural Valley location, a longtime supporter of High Top. 
right there uh, around on Route 85. Can't miss it. Western PA, we have a funny way of uh, giving directions. You say it's only, you know, you use land markers and say it's about about nine miles from this. It's like it's on the right hand side if you're coming from Catanning. <laughs> That's where you can find Dr. Brian and his staff there at Phoenix Physical Therapy in Catanning. A little squib kick again by Osterling. This one's going to go out of bounds, so. Flags once more out on the field. But uh, again, I want to thank uh, Phoenix Physical, Physical Therapy in Rural Valley. Life's all about motion, so orthopedic injuries are just a part of life. Phoenix Physical Therapy in Rural Valley and Catanning will help you recover, recharge, and rise to new heights after an injury by creating a program focused on you. Your life should be pain-free and filled with activities you love, so with the help of of Dr. Brian and the staff there at Phoenix Physical Therapy, you can get there. Give them a, you can schedule online, which is pretty slick, 24-7, or you can uh, give them a call. But uh, make sure you check them out at phoenixphysicaltherapy.com. We uh, also have, uh, again, Damon, uh, Dr. Damon at uh, the Catanning location. Passing attempt now, and man, oh, man, some... Footwork there by number three. Adam Jasper turns that to play that looked broken into something. Gets about a gain of, let's say, about six. Nice play there by Jasper. But uh, mentioning there before Jasper's scamper that uh, we have the uh, containing location. Help sponsors our broadcast in Royal Valley, of course, and then the uh, Natron Heights location jumping on board here over the last week. So, needless to say, uh, you need physical therapy and things of the sort. Uh, make sure you check out Phoenix Physical Therapy first. Pitch high, but brought in there and brought down about a yard short of the first down. Nice little quick pitch. It was high, but able to gather it in and scamper forward was Chauntus. And another player down here for, I believe it's West Shemokin. Is that West Shemokin? I can't see here. Is that Jen Blystone? That doesn't look like Jen down there. That's why I got confused. <coughs> the always busy Jen Blystone. Wait. Um, that might be a uh, Connemore Valley player. Must be as the Connemore coaches have made their way out. I was going to say that uh, didn't look like Jen Blystone. I've seen enough Jen Blystone in our time here <laughs> to, to know um, her face uh, when you see it. So quickly to assist him as the coaching staff and training staff. And the young man will be helped off the field. And we got rolled up on by another player. Make sure we um, get his number. It's hard to see as he's bent over. But um, best wishes to him. Hope he does nothing too serious. One of those things with football, it's always so unfortunate. I always think of Marquise Pouncey, the Steelers center, and that string of injuries really early on in his career. And one of those was uh, he got rolled up on. And uh, might have been a preseason game, as a matter of fact, and cost him the whole year. And really a, a guy with a great career as it was, lost a couple really prime years of his career, did Marquise Pouncey. Been able to keep it pretty healthy there towards the end, but um, still an excellent career, but an unfortunate situation you see often in football so two minutes remaining here 42 to six your score second down and eight to go for 
the Blue Jays. Pitch outside here to this near side. Good blocking outside. Scampering past the 50 or 45, past the 40 is number 32. Connor, Connor Zarka, the sophomore running back, defensive back, listed at 5'11", 145. Ferndale product. So ball spotted at the 38, 143 left. Pitch outside to the right, number 10 receiving it, Philip Ashcom. And met by several West Shemokin tacklers around the 38 yard line, and the whistles indicate another stoppage. A timeout by the Blue Jays. 126 remaining here in this fourth quarter. West Shemokin will move to three and three and get back to that 500 mark on the season. The loss will drop the Blue Jays to 0 and 6. I'm trying to remember offhand who West Shemokin um, will play next week. So we'll just use the old interwebs and find out. Um, West Shemokin, again, we'll move to 3-3 three and three in the Heritage Conference. Uh, and they will face Cambria Heights, who is putting it on Marion Center tonight. That'll be a home game for the Wolves. Interestingly enough, uh, Wolves will have three of their next four games at home, so the friendly confines there in Rural Valley. Second down and nine. Pitch here out to the left side. Saw a moment ago, number 32. Zarco, the ball carrier, gets it out to about the 35 yard line. The clock continuing to roll near the minute mark. In quarter number four, but uh, again, the Wolves will face Cambria Heights, who is taking care of Marion Center here tonight. Then the Wolves will also get Homer Center at home and Northern Cambria at home before hitting the road making a short trip down Route 85 and connecting with Route 119 and playing the Stingers of Marion Center to round out the 2023 regular season slate. But some tough games here ahead for the Wolves. We'll see what they are able to do. <clears throat> 26 seconds left and that might do it. Uh, we'll see if Connemal Valley tries to get off another play. It looks like they will. Huddling up quickly. 15 seconds remain. As we mentioned Connemal Valley dropping to 0 and 6. There's a pitch outside. Lunging forward for the last play of the game to about the 25 yard line. And that will do it. The final score here, West Shimokin. 42, Connemal Valley 6 here on High Top Sports Network, presented by Carson Boyer Funeral Home and Monuments. The very front of that lineup for the West Shemokin, Lou Swartz. Great to see him healthy. I'm not sure if there was anything wrong, but uh, probably just preserving Lou because it's a long season. Lou carries the ball a lot, throws it a lot, involved in pretty much everything this team does, offensively and defensively. And... Uh, want to keep that young man healthy in the event you uh, have a chance at that elusive playoff victory that we talked about earlier in this broadcast. Lou, um, just a tremendous player and um, really fun to watch. That's that's for sure. A lot of these guys aren't just, you know, there's good players, but then there's the good players that are fun to watch. And Lou Swartz, uh, number two for the Wolves, certainly that. Um, we mentioned there a second ago before that final play that Colomel Valley moves to 0 and 6 here in their Heritage Conference debut uh, against the Wolves. And they obviously played a couple games in the Heritage thus far, but record now at 0 and 6. And they will face Colomel Township next week on the road. So, Battle of Colomels. And they will then have another away game at River Valley followed by Cambria Heights at home 
and then we'll take the drive to Homer City, Pennsylvania to play the Homer Center Wildcats to round out the season on 10-27. So West Shemokin again moves to 500, gets back on the winning track after a loss a week ago to River Valley. And they uh, are the meat of the schedule ahead. Difficult games, as we mentioned, still on the schedule against Cambria Heights, Northern Cambria. Season finale against Marion Center, but right before that, a game against uh, oh Homer Center sprinkled in there as well two weeks from tonight. So Wolves will have some work cut out for them, but based on tonight's performance, a little momentum going into these final four games of the regular season for West Shemokin. <clears throat> See if I can quickly get you some out-of-town scores uh, here, presented by Carson Boyer Funeral Home and Monuments. Uh, the games here on our network... Uh, there's a 21 to 20 score in that Armstrong North Catholic game still. We'll see if that, uh, that is live. So we'll wait and see what happens there. Uh, as for the Freeport Yellow Jackets against Shadyside Academy, they lead 28-24. So the Yellow Jackets able to uh, still a win there against their rival. Well, that, no, that's still going on. It's late in that one, so we'll see. Uh, the Mars Fighting Planets uh, will assume we're going to get a victory against Highlands. They lead 41 to 15 late in the fourth quarter there. And then the Wolves and the Blue Jays here, your final well, it's 35 to 6. Or, or, excuse me, 42 to 6. That late touchdown drive by the Wolves made it a 42 to 6 game. So that will do it. Uh, for the out-of-town scores. Um, actually, I'm going to give you some heritage scores before we sign off. And I'm going to give Lou a chance if he still is planning on coming up here to give him, uh, let him get uh, get to talk to you folks out there since he now is the record holder for um, touchdowns, rushing touchdowns in a season along with rushing yards in a season. And it's incredible to think that Lou still has four games. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome folks here at uh, Connemaw Valley. Very inviting. Uh, they were nice to us all week and really helped us out. And uh, really some great folks up here in the press box. So very thankful for uh, Connemaw Valley and the nice people here. Um, but uh, as I was mentioning there a moment ago, Lou Swartz, record hold holder now for touchdowns in a season, along with rushing yards in a season. And he's got four games left. So that right there just tells you a lot about the uh, abilities of that young man, number two, Lou Swartz. Uh, for the West Shemokin Wolves. But, uh, anyways, I'm going to give you these out of town scores and give Lou a little bit of a chance here in case he does want to come up. If not, that's no problem. But uh, the Heritage Conference scores we have for you now final um, Penn's Manor falling to United Valley 14 0. River Valley defeating Marion Center 40 16. Uh, River Valley. Oh, we said that one already. River Valley 40, Marion Center 16. And uh, some of these other ones, um, inconclusive. So those were your out-of-town scores, Heritage Conference-wise, here on High Top Sports Network. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank our sponsors once more because they, again, are the reason you're watching this game wherever you may be, whatever device you may be on. Those sponsors, of course, are Carson Boyer Funeral Home and Monuments, Phoenix Physical Therapy of Rural Valley in Katanning, Schulteis Roofing Incorporated, Safer's HVAC, Bird's Foot Golf Club, my one of my favorite places on the entire planet, and Steffi's Country Catering, <clears throat> Sprinkles Neighborhood Market, Olson Chiropractic, UFP Parker LLC, and uh, Ryan Bowser State Farm in Ford City. So like a good neighbor, Ryan Bowser State Farm is there. Not sure what's uh, all these players sprinting to a, a lady in the corner there. Interesting. But uh, yeah, we'll let uh, we'll let these guys go to the. Uh, oh, here comes Lou. We'll see what's going on here. Maybe Lou's gonna make his way up. Well, since he's gonna be coming up, I want to have to get him a headset here. He won't be able to hear us, but we'll be able to at least. Um, 
or Lou won't be able to hear us, but uh, you'll be able to at least hear Lou, if that's the case. Um, after the Wolves win a 42-6 game here, and Lou able to set some records along the way um, here. We got Coach John McCullough coming too, so that's great. We're going to get uh, both uh, John McCullough and Lou Swartz here before we uh, send you on off into the weekend, I believe. So it, uh, and maybe we'll even get that final at Armstrong for you and let you know what happened there as well. Um, it's a f final here, obviously. Mars taking care of Highlands, 41 to 15. That one's still going, though. It's his third quarter. That can't be right. And then we have go back live here for that Armstrong game. Scoreboard says 21 to or 21 to 20. As Lou joins us here, so as soon as we get a final there, we'll let you know. But a uh, little comeback, a little comeback uh, in the making possibly for the Riverhawks against North Catholic. Uh, Lou. Don't want to take too much of your time. Congratulations, first of all, record holder now for two things, the uh, touchdown record yours and the rushing uh, mark for a season with four games to go. Uh, congratulations. Talk talk to me about what that means to you. You've been here a while. This is your senior year. You know, clinching that, what does it mean? I mean, obviously for a personal goal, it feels great. But, uh, you know, I, our line's just been terrific this year running the ball. Like, without them, I wouldn't have half the yards I have because they're making holes and they're making me run free. Lou, um, we always say there's good players and there's the good players that are fun to watch. We put you in that fun to watch category um, because I, I think if they kept the stat for broken tackles in the state of Pennsylvania, you might be uh, you might be the leader in the clubhouse right now with that. But you know, talk about w what your your feel is now. We're halfway through the season. Um, you know, you're still on a, on a great pace here. Like I said, four games to go, and you already have that school record. So, you know, how do you feel at this point in the season? And what um, you know, what's the attitude like uh, here down the stretch with four games to play? I mean, right now, obviously, it feels great that we got the win, but Coach McCullough told us this week, now we're in the final stretch of the season, we got to treat every game like it's a playoff game because right now we're looking in on the outside for playoffs, but we just need to keep on rolling and keep on winning because this season's special, so we need to get there. Um, a big victory here tonight, um, and and so I guess – What's, what's the feel in the locker room? We kind of talked about, you know, how you're approaching this and stuff, but what's the feel of the locker room now? You guys get back in the winning track after that loss to River Valley. You know, um, how do you guys feel collectively, I think, uh, heading down this stretch run? Right now, I mean, our chemistry is through the roof, you know. The boys, I mean, after always coming after a win, and we're always hyped up, always ready to go. And uh, next week we're just going to start Monday, celebrate over the weekend. Monday, get ready for Cambria Heights. Stay focused and uh, steal the locker room. It's great, great energy. Well, I got to ask. I always wonder these kind of questions. Uh, coach uh, for the uh, opposing team there kind of stopped you there as you guys were going through the line. What, what, what are coaches saying to you at that moment? Because obviously, they, they what you do in the field is obvious, but what are you getting told there in those moments? The first coach told me that uh, I was a heck of a ball player and uh, to keep up the seat throughout the work, and uh, their head coach at the end uh, told me good luck on my future endeavors and that. Uh, I ran the ball really hard tonight and just to keep it up. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's always nice to hear stuff from the other coaches, but. Don't want to let it get too much to my head. No, no, definitely not. I, I know you well enough at this point, Lou, that that's not going to be the case. It's funny, we joked, uh, we're doing a little read for Bird's Foot, and I said, uh, we got to actually get, play around with you this summer, and I said, and you guessed it, Lou can pound the ball pretty far too. So, <laughs> so the folks out there, uh, don't be trying to take Lou on in uh, 18 holes here anytime soon. That was the uh, best I've golfed. That's, that's, he picked I, I, was, I was making them straight. Yeah, man. That was awesome. You, you picked a good time to do it, Lou. I'll leave you off on this one. Um, you know, you check this box off, but I know it's important to you for having those team successes. So, um, you know, how, how much more does that, that fire burn uh, as we head down the stretch run here? Well, right now, you know, we, we know we're looking on the outside for playoffs, so we're, we want it. We want to get in the playoffs. We want to make a run. We need to make history. I mean – Everyone knows it. it's it's my senior year. We got about I think ten seniors total, so we're going to be fighting every game to the end because this is our last shot this year. Yep. Amen. Lou, great to see you as always, man. You too, Keep up, stay healthy, uh, stay well, and uh, we'll be obviously we'll be following you along. But uh, again, stay healthy. Keep doing what you do, man, and uh, you know good things are going to keep happening. Thanks for having me, Joe. Yep. Thanks, Lou. Appreciate you, Lou Swartz, West Shimokin Wolves quarterback, uh, do it all kind of guy here for the Wolves in 2020. Three, uh, just another terrific night for Lou. Um, all around, uh, a couple nice passes there to Ezra Osterling, and 
can't say enough about Ezra Osterling, too, uh, what he's able to do. Because uh, when you're expecting the Wolves to run and you kind of start questioning uh, whether or not they're able to pass or anything like that, there's, there's Lou dropping back and throwing, throwing across his body, find, uh, uh, finding uh, Ezra Osterling. You saw that long touchdown catch, a couple long receptions really in general for Ezra here tonight. Ezra had, I think, 90 yards receiving in the first half alone. So, you know, you wonder if you're, you get frustrated or if a receiver gets frustrated in an in a offense like this. But you know what? It, it, the, the opportunities are less, but Ezra Osterling uh, makes the most of each of those opportunities, it seems. And whenever Lou Swartz puts the ball on Ezra like he did a couple times tonight, that touchdown catch was a perfect example uh, where Ezra just ran a great route kind of held that uh, defender off a little bit just so he could get the space he needed to bring in that, that pass from Swartz. And as a result, the Wolves uh, put it in the end zone and, and uh, did so frequently here tonight, scoring 42 points and allowing just six. And mentioned the Wolves came into this game um, scoring about 26.2 a game and uh, allowing 28. So the Wolves uh, doing what they needed to, uh, to fend off a pesky... Uh, new team here in the Heritage Conference. A lot of new teams as Coach uh, John McCall. Uh, something. Yeah, you're not going to be able to hear me, Coach. Go ahead. And oh, okay. there, are you there? there? Popped off for a second. I don't know what happened there. Oh, good, Coach. I think I got you now. Coach? Oh, good. There we go. You're not going to hear me. I'm just going to hear you. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Uh, that, that doesn't make a question answer session go any easier, I'm sure. But great <laughs> to see you, Coach. I haven't got to see you her too, for a Jordan. while. I, 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 I said to the folks that uh, this is the first West Shemokin game I've done here in like two years because the, of the guys last year, Nico right. and Sean doing a great job and uh, wouldn't allow me to come. But uh, great, to, great to be here. Great to see you guys, Coach. Um, you know, tell me where uh, kind of how I left off with Lou. What's the state of the program? How are you guys feeling right now? You know your work's cut out for you. A couple right. big games here ahead. Uh, right. I mean, you know, I mean, here early on in the season, um, you know, the three games we lost, you know, th those three teams, their combined record's 13-2. and two. Wow. You know, we were, you know, extremely competitive. And, you know, you know a couple breaks here and there, we probably could have won, you know, you know, maybe two of those. So, you know, it's not like we were playing – you know, terrible. Um, but we knew we, there's a lot of things that we had to clean up, especially on the defensive side of the ball and, you know, ball security on offense. Um, you know, and tonight, you know, I think we established ourselves, and that, that was the goal that we, that we had. We, our attitude was that we were going to be physical, um, you know, this week and shut down their run and be able to, uh, you know, be balanced on offense. And, um, you know, I think we achieved that goal here tonight. You know, I thought at the line of scrimmage, um, you know, we set the tone. Uh, you know, on the defensive side of the ball, I don't think they, they probably had, I think, one first down and probably negative yardage up until late there in the second quarter. Yeah. And then offensively, um, you know, we, we, we ran the ball extremely well. Um, and we made plays in the passing game tonight, which were key. You know, Ezra Ostling really stepped up. Uh, we had a fourth down, big, you know, big play. Uh, for a touchdown, and he was able to get another one, you know, later in the half. So that was, um, you know, a nice step in the right direction, you know, from a pass game standpoint. Um, special teams, you know, our kick coverage has to be better than what it was tonight. Um, we can't allow them to, uh, you know, you know, setting up uh, possessions, you know, near midfield. So those are things you know, that we have to work on and get better at. And we have to continue to get better in all, you know, all three phases. Yeah. You know, don't be satisfied with, you know, with what it was tonight. Was it good tonight? Yes. But it has to be better, you know, especially as we move on here into the last, you know, portion of the season. You know, next week we have a, you know, pretty tough ball game. Good Cambria Heights team who's physical, play good defense, um, downhill running game. So, you know, that physical approach that we had tonight, must be there again next week and, you know, up to another level than what it was tonight because, um, you know, they're, they're, they're going to be a tough physical team. So uh, we just have to continue to progress in that direction and continue to get better each week. Yeah, you mentioned Cambria Heights there, Coach. Um, they were holding off Homer there for a while, but uh, Homer creeping back in. It's 27 to 14 at last wow. uh, check there. Actually make it um, – 27 to 14 with 351 okay. left there, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's not surprising. I mean Homer, you know, I mean Homer is who they are, and they're 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 a tough physical football team. You know, Coach Page does a great job there, so I'd expect them to be hanging around. Um, yeah. 
you know, those are two good football teams. You know, I don't know what else is really going on in the conference tonight. But, um, we got a late one here. Portage 27, purchase line 26 with seven minutes in the that's, fourth. So. That, that's a little, you know. But, again, I mean, the it, it thing isn't a heritage. You know, I mean, to, yep. top to bottom each week, um, you know, it, it, it's it's an extremely competitive conference. Yeah. I mean, it really is. Especially with the new um, teams and adding so many more teams yeah, into it. Yeah, it, it just makes it that much even more competitive. Um, you know, I mean, you, like you, know, you said there, you know, Portage is, you know, what, up, up by one on purchase line? Yep. I mean, I mean, Portage has an outstanding program, and they're always traditionally, you know, um, extremely competitive. So, you know, anything anything from a score standpoint really doesn't surprise me <laughs> week to no. week in this conference. I think the only thing that kind of surprised me, a lot of high-scoring games here tonight. Uh, 40, uh, 40 points put on Marion Center by River Valley there, it looked okay. like. And, uh, I mean, River Valley's really rolling right now. Um, you know, I mean, unfortunately, last week, you know, we you know, didn't play our best. Uh, but, you know, hats off to them. So I mean, you know, it's a it's an exciting conference. So, you know, like I said, um, you know, we gotta gotta be at our top of our game next week. Coach, uh, I'd be remiss. To, obviously, a big night for Lou. Um, that record, I know right. you know this about Lou as much as I do. That he's not out here for personal accolades. Uh, no, he's not. But it, but what a what an impressive feat that is, and to do it with four games remaining right. too. Right. Right. Um, I mean, for for what he's done so far this season, I I don't know how many yards he had tonight. Um, he probably. Close to 200, I would I would assume so. I mean, he had over 1,100 coming into the ball game, which is insane. So you know, six games and you're 13, 1,400 yards. Um, that's uh, that's pretty impressive. Coach, I'm doing this late. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. There we go. I saw, I'm sorry, Coach. I don't know why. No, no. I just thought of that because um, I'm up here talking by myself the whole time. But. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's the thing about Lou, I think, that's so amazing. You look at his first half numbers, I have them written here somewhere, but I think he had 132 yards rushing and still 108 or something like that in the air. Yeah. Uh, or 130, I think it's darn split there. Um, what Which he is great. Do, I mean, that, yeah. that's great balance. Right. You know, so. And you kind of mentioned it, too, with Ezra. You know, you know this, and, and I think your players know this, with, with the kind of offense you like to run, those chances for your receivers are going to be fewer and further between. But it seems right. like with Ezra – he makes the most of every single oh, one of those. Oh, he's capable. I mean, Ezra's a you know excellent athlete, and um, you know he's tall. You know, it's so I mean he, he can be a matchup problem, and um, you know whenever he's on top of his game, he's he's pretty good. Yeah, and I love that touchdown catch by him because you could kind of tell right. that ball was perfectly thrown by Lou. Of perfect course. throw, perfect catch. You know, you you couldn't have. Uh, executed it much better yeah and he kind of like did a little bit of a hesitation just to kind of keep the defender off of him awesome. and then put those hands yep. out to uh you know bring it in all hands too so right. just a great kind of just a high iq play there by ezra um coach just quickly give me uh what it's going to take for you guys to to you know take a take a step here in these next few games and get back to the postseason yeah i mean you know it's uh each week now is a one game playoff you know and the only uh you know the only game that matters is the one that we're uh that we're going to have next week right now. Um, so you know, all focus needs to be on, you know, getting better this week and being the best that we can possibly be for a good football team. And, you know, you know we have four games left, and they're all going to be tough physical games. Um, so we, we better continue to, uh, to progress and keep getting better each week because um, if you don't, uh, there's a good chance that, uh, that you're going to lose Friday. Yep. Well said. Coach, thanks so much. A uh, little update here. I know you're not an Armstrong grab, but you're a Catanning guy. I'm a Katanning guy. So yeah, you kind of – Yeah, so that's good that you know, Armstrong won. They won, yeah, yep. That's, that's good. Big good comeback there. Yeah, only yep. allowed 20 points. It's a good night for the Armstrong School District. Then. There it is. Yeah, so. exactly. That's why it's relevant. But, uh, Coach, again, thank you so much. Uh, great, yeah. great to see you because I haven't too, seen you Joe. for quite some time. Yep. Um, and best of luck moving forward. I know uh, I appreciate you got it. that tough game against Cambria Heights. I think you got Northern Cambria in the schedule, Homer, and then yeah, Mary Yeah, we got – uh, we got three in, three in a row at, at home. home. That's nice. Camber Heights, Homer, the Northern, and then we finish at Marion Center. Right, which is a nice short drive too. Right. And nights like right. this, I don't so know no, how much. So the, no more uh, long uh, long hauls like it is tonight. Yeah, hour and a half trip so. home at uh, whatever time nine thirty. But hey, you know, hour and a half uh, ride home is not so bad after a victory. After a win tonight. Exactly, so. Coach. Thanks again. Great to see thanks, you. Thanks, Joe. Take care. Best of luck moving forward. Thank you. Absolutely, John McCullough. Head coach of the Western American Wolves. What is this? Year nine for you, coach? I think eleven. So I'm gonna. I think I'm pretty sure you're the longest tenured coach in Western American history, if I'm not correct. So, and certainly uh, school lucky to have that uh, gentleman there with his wealth of knowledge. But uh, thanks so much, coach. As always, it's yep. just a pleasure. Really, yep, no problem, Joe. Thank, Thank you. you, John McCullough, Western American head coach. After the Wolves are able to.
take a 42 to six win over the Connemal Valley Blue Jays here on High Top Sports Network. I don't keep any of you folks up any later than you have to. My bedtime soon enough. Um, but uh, do want to thank our sponsors again. You know who those folks are. Read them all night, and uh, they're wonderful people too, and we're so grateful to have them. Uh, but lastly, thank you folks. You have many ways to spend your time, as I like to say, and you decide to spend it with us, and that doesn't go unnoticed or unappreciated. And we certainly uh, value your viewership and uh, your support of us here on High Top Sports Network. Um, for Ryan Farster to my right, Ryan, thank you for an excellent job on camera as always. Um, just a terrific job there. Um, and again, thank you folks. You guys are terrific. Until uh, until sometime this week, um, we bring you some volleyball. We got football, of course, next Friday. But until then, uh, as I like to say, may no train pass you by. We'll see you.